Hello friends and thanks so much for clicking on this video. Bienvenidos. Today I am very excited to talk about some of the new Star Trek Prodigy items that have been added to the game in Star Trek Online. Um, some of these actually, I think all of these are from the lockbox, but you can purchase some of these items on the exchange. Some people have already put some of these items up and you can just spend some EC to grab some of these. Stick around to the end because I have a massive giveaway going on and I call it massive because there's a lot of items in it, but it's for one winner and um, yeah, it's going to be some of these items that I'm going to be showing you. So definitely stick around to the end for that. But let's let's go ahead and take a look at the items right now. I am in Earth Space Talk with my character Shikar and as you can see, he is rocking that new Star Trek Prodigy uniform. I think it looks great. I really like the uh, the look of it, the design. I'm really enjoying this new Delta that um, they have for for this uniform. It's very neat. Um, yeah, so if you don't know how to get this, by the way, this is being given out by Cryptic for free to everybody with an account. Um, go to where it says here store on the top right hand corner. Um, click on the Zen store. Go where it says promotions under promotions. Um, you might not have to scroll down as much as I do, but you're looking for this right here. It says Starfleet Protostar Uniform, and then make sure to click claim um, on the bottom right. Once you click claim, you're good to go and you can just log off the game, but definitely do this because in the past, Cryptic has given us some free uniforms. And now if you, if you didn't get them, there's no other way to get them, but through the MUDS market. So you have to go to MUDS market and spend some actual Zen on a new uniform or a uniform that was given out for free in the past. So yeah, just just make sure that you claim this because it, again, it's being given away for free right now. So claim it as soon as possible because once um, that goes away from the promotions tab, you might not be able to get it again until it comes into the MUDS market and then you'll actually have to pay for it. So why pay for something that was free, right? Just log in for two seconds and grab it. All right, enough about the uniform. Let's take a look at some of the items here. Now I'm gonna go over not every single little thing, but most of the things that are on there. And the first one I wanna touch on is this universal kit module, uh, Watcher Robots. So basically when you click on this ability, you get three Watcher Robots for 45 seconds each, or 45 seconds and each Watcher Robot has the following attacks. Uh, 168.3 anti-proton damage, at least at my level right here which is it looks like uh, mark 10 you also get the shock 39 electrical damage hold for eight seconds 43.6 second recharge time on that so it could hold your enemies in place and um which is kind of nice so again this is uh, at mark 10 the watcher robots next we have the universal kit frame tricorder by the way the watcher robots i don't know if you saw the you know the show but if you don't know they just look like little scorpions little metallic scorpions so it's kind of neat all right sorry moving on <laughs> we got the universal kit frame the tricorder protostar version mark 12 in this case um this one happens to have some um, personal shield uh, resistances and also weapons damage times two so for this one you get 52.5 weapons proficiency which improves your ground weapons and plus 26.2 personal shield hardness now this can be re-rolled what i mean by that is re-engineered so if you right click on an item you go to where it says re-engineer item and then you could change that if you know let's say that armor is the the biggest thing for you, you just want your character to have a lot of armor then you could change all these to the armor um power and that'll help out in that way but this costs dilithium and it costs some salvage, so just be aware of that. All right, so just a kit frame, a tricorder kit frame. Um, I think the uniqueness here maybe is this exposed attack because it's a tricorder. Um, I mean, a science officer does the same thing, and the science officer has a, a tricorder where you can scan and expose uh, your targets um, for an attack. So I don't know if it's that much different, but. It's something, <laughs> but usually that's only on a science officer. So this could be, you know, on a tactical officer or something like that, too. So it'll be um, basically they can have that ability as well. 
All right, next let's move on to the the ground weapons. There are two of them. The first one is the Protostar Phaser High Density Rifle. This happens to be Mark 12 with a crit damage, crit chance, and a damage mods. Um, basically, the uniqueness here in this weapon is that you get a 5% chance to grant one of the following abilities for 15 seconds. Um, so you get a plus 26.2 weapons proficiency. Again, this is at Mark 12. Um, a plus 26.2 willpower, plus 26.2 kit performance, plus 26.2 personal shield hardness, plus 20 critical severity, and plus two critical chance. So the thing about this is 5% is pretty low. So, and then if, even if you do get it, it's gonna randomly pick for you one of these following abilities. So you don't get to be like, you know, I really just want the crit severity. You know, whenever this pops off, I want it to be the crit severity. Well, you really can't choose, right? It's a random, it'll pick a random one. And, you know, unfortunately, it might be the one that you really don't need at the moment. <laughs> you know, it might give you personal shield harness and what you're really wanting is weapon power, you know, or something like that. Or you might want some little power and it's gonna give you kit performance instead. So, um, yeah, and it's just a 5% chance. So, I mean, it's something different, but I just don't know how useful it is and I don't know how much you'll actually be able to use that. Uh, the, the secondary attack is called high density beam. Basically, this is a cylindrical area of effect phaser damage, and it has the the um, basically the ability to repel your enemy as well. It's got a plus 25 to repel, so that's nice. And it also gives you that you know 5% chance to grant one of the following abilities as well. So um, it's a neat rifle. Let me show you what it looks like actually, real quick. I think it's really cool looking. There it is. Let me take out the UI here for y'all. I mean. To me, that is one of the coolest looking rifles in the game. I really, really love the look of that. Let me see if I aim it. Look at that. Staring down the barrel. <laughs> I really like this weapon. It looks great. Very clean, very cool, very futuristic. I really like it. All right, so that is the, the high density beam rifle there. And um, let's go ahead and take a look at the phaser stun pistol. Now, this is a protostar specifically phaser stun pistol. It's basically a, basically a regular phaser weapon. Um, again, nothing, nothing super huge to write home about. It has that mechanic where you get a 5% chance also to grant one of the following abilities. But again, it's just a 5% chance. It might not pop off. And even if it does, you won't be able to pick what it does. So, you know, to me, not anything that to write home about really, but it's kind of neat looking as well. So let me show you what that looks like. That's what it looks like holstered. Um, basically just kind of hovers next to you there. <laughs> it's got some anti-gravity holster or something, I guess. Um, so yeah, it just kind of hovers there. It's got this huge display on it at the top. I don't know if you can see that when I move right here. So big display kind of makes it look a little bit like a phone. But let me go ahead and just kind of put it in the hand there, like if I was gonna use it. So that's that's what it looks like being held by by your character. Let's try to aim it here. Oh, that's ugly. That's gotta be a glitch. That's a bug in game. Look at that. My character's arm twists around fully. I mean, my thumb from my <laughs> from my opposite hand is pointing back at me like this. That just looks painful. Um, and it's kind of going through the, clipping through the other hand. Look at that right there. Yeah, that looks pretty bad. So, hmm. Yeah, looks pretty gruesome. That's something that don't need to fix in game again it's it's a bug for sure so it doesn't look the greatest all right let's holster that before it gets too too creepy around here <laughs> all right next we have the ability you have the ability to get one of these um uh melanoid slime worms basically the murphs um so 
there's different types there's i believe there's like five in total something like that there's four other versions besides the prodigious one the prodigious one if you want the slime worm that looks like murph within the show then it's the prodigious one that's the one you want however that being said because the prodigious one looks like murph it is also the most expensive one on the exchange so if you're trying to get this from the exchange you're going to be paying top dollar for um for this specific melanoid slime worm so the other ones are quite a bit cheaper so if you just want a melanoid slime worm you don't care specifically the color there i think there's like a green one there's one that's um i believe it's like orangey color there's one that's uh kind of a dark blue um like really dark like like a midnight color i guess something like that and um i think there's one that's like pinkish so those are different ones if you don't care the color and you just kind of want a melanoid slime word following you around then um definitely cheaper options over there out there than the prodigious one but um but yeah this is a non-combat pet so it's just for your social maps when you're walking around it's going to you know follow you around and actually i have one here so let's go ahead and take a look at him real quick and there it is this is uh the prodigious one so this is one of the the ones that looks like murph and it's really cool looking it has a little bit of a glow i don't know if you can see that but on the ground um he glows a bit it's really cool looking and it'll follow you around let's go look at that see it's really fast too <laughs> all right so yeah you can get murph it's really cool <laughs> Or one of his cousins so you have that it's kind of again it's called the uh melanoid slime worm so if you're looking through the exchange type that in and you should be able to see the ones that are available all right goodbye murph next thing you get is a weapons box the weapons box gives you the 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 chance to grab uh space phaser weapons so you get phaser beam arrays you get dual beam banks and you get some cannons and they're all of course of the phaser uh, variety there's no disruptors or any other kind of weapons because this is based off of uh the protostar right star trek prodigy protostar which has these phaser weapons on it so they have the same look um so a little bit uh, more red i believe than your regular standard phasers and which is kind of neat and i don't know if it has any special sound to them i haven't played around with them yet um so you get some of these the phaser beam arrays for, um, specifically are more expensive right now those are the ones that are going for for a higher higher amount than the dual beam banks or the cannons so i guess it's what people want the most right it's most like the the show um to have phaser beam arrays um firing from your ship so they're just more expensive right here i have some mark 11s and um they're of course they're all very rare and i got six of them here of different you know different uh different procs on all of these so but again you can get these in canon form um so if you're going for a canon build those are a little bit cheaper you can get those on the exchange and um the dual beam banks are also cheaper so if you're just trying to do like a forward facing fire damage build, um, the dual beam banks might be nice for you. Next, we got some space traits. We actually have three space traits with this uh, log box. And let's go over those real quick. The first one is called go fast and go fast um, increases your flight turn rate and impulse speeds on your ship. So if you feel your ship ship is being kind of slow, if you think you have a big clunker, uh, <laughs> uh one of those huge miracle worker um engineering ships then uh you might this trait might be useful to you to give it a little bit of increased flight turn rate and impulse speeds to your ship the next space trait we have is the old razzle dazzle and in the old razzle dazzle you get um, basically when crit when critically hit you gain random amounts of power to all subsystems so the only thing I could think of off the top of my head, and again, I'm no authority on builds, but, um, you know, I keep hearing people say that the, uh, that the Romulan ships are underpowered, right? 
because of the singularity core they don't have a regular warp core they have a singularity warp core and some people complain it's always underpowered so maybe something like this could help a little bit um i don't know what the chances or anything like that but it says when critically hit you gain random amounts of power so i guess it's just random amounts of power so it could be a little bit of power it could be a lot of bit of power uh <laughs> and but to all subsystems which is kind of nice so if you feel your your ship's a little underpowered then maybe the old razzle dazzles for you all right the next space trait we have is a whole lot of x's and let's take a look at that real quick whole lot of x's gives you hull and shield heal when you are low on hull so if you feel that your build is squishy that your ship blows up just a lot and you really need all the help you can get then this space trait might be for you whole lot of x's um so that's x apostrophe s and it'll give you some hull and shield heal when you are low on your hull so three space traits pretty interesting i don't know that i've seen three space space traits in in a lockbox before from the same same kind of like promotional lockbox so i don't know i'm not promotional lockbox just a regular lockbox all right next we have ha yes we have duty officers so if you want the crew of the protostar you can grab them as duty officers um, from that lockbox or on the exchange now i will say that the first one dalrell he is the most expensive one and then we have Gwendala, jenkin pog we have rock talk and zero so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to switch over to the star trek online wiki so that we can see what each of these kind of the abilities that each of these have let's go all right so here we are in the star trek online wiki the one without all the ads the new one um it's fantastic i love it uh, <laughs> so let's take a look at these duty officers and see what they offer so dalrell he gives you um basically uh reduced recharge time for attack pattern beta by 15 percent uh your attack pa pattern beta power has a chance to restore a small portion of your hull when firing energy weapons and while under the effects of attack pattern beta each weapon fire has a 50 percent chance to restore 0.2 percent of your max hull so really neat also you get a 20 percent chance to activate fire at will one with attack pattern beta uh, max over 30 seconds so really neat um Dalrel, so because he he affects attack pattern beta because you get a chance to activate fire at will with attack pattern beta because you know you get a 50 percent chance to restore 0.2 percent of your max hull he seems to be um a pretty useful um uh, duty officer um i don't know if in every situation but i know that if i was able to get this on my free-to-play character I would slot this duty officer right away. Um, anything helps, right? So <laughs> Delrel, he is uh, a gold duty officer here. He also has the traits congenial, free thinker, honorable, and stubborn. So really cool looking um, little card for him. Let's take a look at some of the others. So Prodigy Duty Officer Gwendala. We have her here she her specialization is security officer she, there's a chance to beam down watcher robots when security team is used so that's kind of neat so just by slotting gwendala into your um basically your duty officer ground area every time that you beam down a security team if you have a uh, a tactical officer if you're playing on a tactical character right um you have that ability called security team where you beam down a couple of uh of officers to come help you fight so now if you slot gwendala there um as part of your duty officers for ground you have a chance to beam down the watcher robots as well very very neat the traits are honorable logical perfectionist and tactful so very cool gwendala um uh, ground duty officer epic quality um and let's take a look at some of the other ones and here we go, Jenkin Pog. Also, epic quality. All of these are epic quality. Um, Telerite maintenance engineer. Recharge time reduced for engineering team and buff. So it says recharge time reduced for engineering team by 15 seconds and buff to starship hull repair when use of engineering team. So if you use engineering team to kind of heal your hull, um, with Jenkin Pog, you have 
um, a chance to reduce engineering team by 15 seconds. Also, a 20% chance after five seconds to apply engineering team one again. And um, a plus 10 starship hull restoration, which improves hull healing for 15 seconds after activating engineering team and reduces engineering team's recharge time by 15 seconds. So 20% chance to have this happen right here. So basically if, you know, surviving or if supporting other people in uh, TFOs and you if you're taking the brunt of the damage right for everybody else while they take out the enemy, then uh, this might be something useful to slot. So Jenga Pog, maintenance engineer and um, recharge time reduced to engineering team. So kind of neat. All right, next here we have Rock Talk. Rock Talk gives you the ability to or a chance to create seismic agitation field when tricorder scan is used. 10% chance to create seismic agitation field for 20 seconds. The traits are free thinker, logical, tactful, and teamwork. Uh, department science, specialization, geologist. One of my favorite characters from the show for sure. All right, let's take a look at the last uh, duty officer. And here we are, zero um, duty officer. His name is zero, not a zero duty, not like not a duty officer. Wait, there's a joke in there somewhere. Sorry, I'm not doing it very well. So it's an actual officer. His name is zero. That's what I meant to say. All right. So tactical department con officer reduces time for evasive maneuvers to recharge after use by four to 10 seconds. Additional 25 plus 25 to accuracy for eight seconds based on your current speed and improved chance or er, improved recharge team by four to 10 seconds. Improve recharge team. I don't know what recharge team is. That might be a typo here in the in the Star Trek online wiki, but basically you get a chance to reduce evasive maneuvers and additional plus 25 to accuracy for eight seconds based on the current speed. And the traits are efficient, logical, peaceful, and teamwork. So if you need um, somebody to help you reduce evasive maneuvers and you haven't gotten the con officer from the Phoenix lockbox then this might be um a duty officer you might want so all right so let's go back to the game and see what else there is all right here we are back in game and um i'm gonna go to space here real quick because i want to show you um something else by the way i don't know if you noticed the protostar there in the background but it's there in earth space dock front and center for all to see and oogle um is oogle the word i think so um, <laughs> so here in space, I want to show you one of the things that you can get, and that is the Protostar um, Vanity Shield, or the Prodigy called, it's actually called the Prodigy Vanity Shield, it really should be the Protostar Vanity Shield, but the Prodigy Vanity Shield is on my, my ship right here, it's the in, an Intrepid class ship, so basically let me go ahead and remove it so you guys can see the difference and you know what i'm gonna do is render scale two here so it looks a little bit better and you know what let's go ahead and move a ways a bit just so i don't have a bunch of uh other ships in the background and so y'all can see the differences a little bit better so let's see here that eh, should be good right here Okay. All right. So here we have the ship sans shield, uh, vanity shield. So this is what it looks like regular. Um, by the way, this is a beautiful model. I love, I love it. It's my favorite ship, um, the Voyager. So, um, I know everybody has their preference. Um, I love the Odyssey too. And, and some of the other ships, um, the Excelsior is a favorite of mine as well. But, um, if I had to pick one, it would be, uh, the interpret class, the Voyager. I just think it looks really cool. All right, so that's what it looks like without the vanity shield. And let's go ahead and put it on and see how that changes. So immediately you can see that the hull got a little bit darker. Then the cells got a different kind of color of blue, kind of a lighter, more glowy type of blue. The um, the deflector dish array right here uh, changed color as well. Now you have this kind of orange glow to that. Uh, the hull looks a little bit more armored, actually, now with this shield on. A lot more paneling. Or, I don't know if paneling is the right word, but a lot more 
kind of square things going on here and um yeah basically just looks a little bit more armored the um what is it called the impulse exhaust i guess um here looks kind of a little bit more like a reddish pink so yeah basically darkened it a bit more made it look a little bit more armored maybe and changed a couple of colors on there so let me go ahead and take that off again so we can see the difference and yeah see look at that so definitely looks different Voyager itself already kind of looks a little bit armored just just because of the lines and stuff like that it has on the on the hull. but when you put this vanity shield on there everything looks like it gets accentuated a little bit more um yeah so very nice um vanity shield actually i'm gonna leave that on my ship for now and that's it i think that's it for for the items if i'm missing anything please go ahead and leave that down in the comment section below um obviously i didn't have the different uh types of weapons like the cannons and the dual beam banks but um but basically they're they're all phaser weapons so not too much not not a huge difference except the type of damage that it or the amount of damage that it does right and the way you build but i think i got everything and um besides the ship and i do have the ship actually on my account um somebody was gracious enough to trade for it and i just i haven't opened it yet i haven't played around with it yet because i'm i'm waiting for tribble to uh get fixed so that i can go ahead and transfer it to tribble first and do a visual review with all the vanity shields on it um so um looking forward to, to the day when i can do that uh so i could actually go ahead and play around with with my ship here in holodeck so i hope that it was informative for you to to see all the items on there to see kind of what you might want to get what you might want to grab from from maybe the exchange um do i recommend you opening up lock boxes no never um <laughs> i never recommend it it's it's um it's a lot of money <laughs> it's just a lot of money um right now you know i'm just i don't have any money to spare so everything that i got i got from the exchange with ec and with the exception again of the uh, of the ship that i was able to trade for because i already had a lock box um so we traded you know ships basically for for between each other so yeah i'm looking forward to playing around with it i'm looking forward to playing around more with some of these items um from uh, star trek prodigy in game and so tell me what are you most uh wanting to play around with that has to do with star trek prodigy in the game do you want the melanoids uh slime worm or perhaps one of the really cool phasers um leave it down in the comment section below and let me know all right so now what i want to tell everybody is um as you know i i have a well if you don't know um i mentioned it i think before in the video is that I have a giveaway going on right now on my discord page my discord link is down in the description below and i am giving away basically everything that you saw here in my inventory all these items are going to be given away you know i mean you have pretty much everything except the vanity shield and the ship everything that you need to start your star trek prodigy journey and star trek online and i hope that whoever wins this really enjoys it um i was got all these items again with my own ec um there were no uh there were no people sponsoring this giveaway other than myself by the way if you're one of those people that that enjoy sponsoring giveaways definitely hit me up in the discord because um at some point i'm gonna run out of ec and i won't be able to do um many giveaways anymore so if you want to sponsor some giveaways for our star trek online community uh, reach reach out to me on the discord and uh, I'd be very happy to talk to you about that. So All right, that's gonna be it for me today y'all. I hope that y'all enjoyed this and um, Again, don't forget to just get in on that giveaway It's completely free to, to get in and do that. So and good luck to everybody who does enter until the next video Live long and prosper. Take care